this video is all about coding interviews 101 and this is going to be the first of many videos I'm going to be delivering here and I wanted to set a really good baseline for people so that we're all kind of on the same page of like things I just assume we all know we need to do because in interviews I do on a daily basis I feel like some of this stuff really is not apparent and I want to make it extremely apparent to you. My name is Jason Humphrey on behalf of Simple Programmer. Let's get started. First and foremost, your manners. Please, for goodness sakes, have some manners. Too far often people come in and just do not have them or they think they're right on everything. They don't open doors. They don't do the subtlest things uh, that you know you would do on a regular basis because nerves get in the way or whatever it might be. So manners is the first key. Listening is the second. Far too often will I give instructions that I see in an interview that people don't listen to. And it's as simple as say, taking some piece of data and putting it on a chart or list laying it out or console logging something and they don't do it. And it blows my mind when people don't listen to subtle requests that show you as a candidate don't actually listen very well. And that is a kind of a big problem because I want someone on my team that can listen. Third thing, being direct. Far too often people are vague. And when I mean direct, I mean, I'm gonna give you a question. If you do not know the answer, please tell me because if you're gonna start talking around in circles, you're gonna end up becoming really vague in your answer. And then I might press you on something and then you're gonna be more vague and it's just gonna look really, really bad. You will see, and maybe you do this yourself, people seem to think that the more they talk, the better it gets. And maybe something in there that I heard, I might like, but that's where the vagueness comes from. You talk around things so much and only 20% of what you're saying is actual content. Well, that's pretty damn vague to me. So not vague, but be direct. Next is confidence in how you talk about yourself. Um, far too often people use the words, I guess, and I assume, and maybe if I'm right, or they just do some self-deprecating talk and not in a humorous way, but self-deprecating talk in the interview. And it's like, wait, I want to hire a good candidate. This doesn't feel, this doesn't feel good because you don't feel good about yourself. This actually feels really socially awkward, which, you know, I would rather you think about what you're going to talk about, talk about it more confidently. Number five, do not lie, please, for goodness sakes. And that's the second time I'm going to use that one because you would think this is so obvious. It is not, I guess. Whether it might be on a resume, whether it might be about your technical skills, um, stories, if you lie about something, it's going to be found out more often than not because if the story is too good to be true, which it normally is, we're going to press you on it. And then we're gonna look into this and go, oh, so you have some AWF certificates. Tell me more, how'd you get them? What'd you do? Give me a little insight here. And then when you don't have that insight, it becomes really apparent. And I have had people lie to me before. And needless to say, the interview didn't go much longer. So do not lie, point number five here to 101. Being prepared is my next point. Far too often people come in and aren't necessarily prepared. Uh, not just on what we do, but what the company does, what the job might do, uh, what I, the interviewer, if you know anything about the interview, not prepared for the interviewer, because it's easy to do a little research if you know who you're going to interview with. And being prepared also is in the sense of, you know what you want to talk about today. You have your stories in a line. You have your resume right over. You know the job. You know all of this. And you don't come in asking really, I normally say there's no such thing as a dumb question. Well, there is in an interview. And a dumb question is one that is uh, one where you ask a question that you could easily Google the answer for, but instead you're asking me when I assumed you know about the research because you're excited about the job or something of that nature. With any given aspect, be prepared because there's all different facets of being prepared as I was just kind of trying to talk about. I will talk more about that in another interview, or not interview, I'll talk about that more in another video here coming up soon but point is be prepared. Next point, have your laptop. In case you have any take home problems or in case you're doing the next phone interview, but they said it's a technical one, 
Please bring your laptop home if you're taking from home or wherever it is. Watch out for over and under talking. You do not want to do either or, and this kind of goes to the point up above, right, of being direct and not vague. People will talk too much as I talked about and hoping they like something in there. And sometimes they'll just talk under, like, what is Ajax? Ajax, Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. And then it's really short and they under talk it and they don't give any context potentially or any background to how they use it or anything of that nature. And it just becomes not a very good answer. Over and under talking is another point. And know what you want in this role. Like what, what do you want to get out of this? You know, is this the next step up for you to become senior? Is this the next step towards management? What is this role? Because I would ask, hey, you know, what, what are you here for? What, what are you looking at? How can we help you at some point? And far too often people don't know what they want. And it's like, well, how am I supposed to help you? Or like, how do I know if this is a great fit for you if you don't even know what you want for yourself, right? Working at McDonald's could be a great for you for fit for you as well too. But if you don't know what you want, how are we supposed to know that which one's better? <laughs> I like that example. Um, right? And then the tech you want to use, make sure you know what you want to use. In the sense of right now, if you're a node developer, you might like Express over some of these TypeScript servers um, that, that are popping up. Uh, if you're a front-end developer, you also might like Angular over React. So know what you want to use. Know what you like and know why you like it. Do you have a technical responsibility? So what you know, if you say you're a front-end developer with good skills in JavaScript, you must know JavaScript well, you have a technical responsibility to be answering the pros and cons on it, answering, you know, why would you use it? How do you use it? Where do you study? Where do you learn things? How do you network with it? How do you find answers in the community? What open source projects do you follow? What styles and standards? There's a lot in technical responsibility you should know about what you're talking about or promoting yourself on for the um, for from your resume specifically. And last point in the 101, and that is know your audience. Please learn and know your audience because in every room, in every interview, it's different. Some people are really personable. Some people don't talk a lot. And when I say know your audience, I'm saying the person on the other side from you, right? If you're telling jokes that they don't get or you're trying to be personable towards them and they're just not picking up what you're putting down, know your audience. Know if they're not technical and you're just talking over your head or know if they are technical and know you need to get into the depth and depth of knowledge, not breadth. And this is where I'm getting at with know your audience and I'll be doing some more on this, but know them, pay attention to who you're talking to and make a point to make the conversation relevant and be really personable in that scenario. And that's it for Coding Interview 101. We talked a little bit here now about, I'm just gonna point out a few that I really think you should focus on, your manners, listening, the confidence, uh, being prepared and your technical responsibility. Those are just a few. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on this stuff, but this is the baseline of things I want you to know in the 101. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I also will be leaving a one pager for you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll see you guys in the next video.